Coming up in today's video, we take a look at how I paint World War II German field grey uniforms on my 28mm miniatures. The techniques shown in this tutorial will work with most scales and really does stand out nicely on the tabletop. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video as I'll explain more about this World War II German horse-drawn limber from Eureka Miniatures. <laughs> Okay, so let's paint some field grey. So to start off with, we're using green uniform from AK Interactive. Now you might be saying, I can't use AK, I can't get my hands on it. Fine, use Vallejo German field grey World War II. I just find the green uniform from AK just to be a slightly bit lighter, which is what I really like, but I've used German grey, uh, field grey uh, from Vallejo many times in the past, and it is a wonderful paint to use for this as well. Now, the great thing about German uniforms from the Second World War, especially the here uniforms when we're talking about field grey, is the fact that there was a whole variety of greens and blues and greys. So, you know, just because I'm using this green doesn't mean that you need to. This green, as you can tell by the picture, actually isn't even in there. This is quite light. So you can use a darker green, you can use a lighter green, you can use one with a blue tinge, you can use one with a grey tinge. Up to you. They were all, um, all there, so whatever you want to use, you can use. Now, I use, for the wash, I use no oil and technical medium at a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's very important that one-to-one -one ratio, and I know I say it a lot in my videos, but if you're new here, this is, I have to repeat it. You don't want to use your wash straight out of the bottle. Because nine times out of 10, your model is gonna become super dark where you go to put that base color down when you layer it, and it's just gonna look silly. It's gonna to look too light, and your model's gonna to look too dark in the recesses. And don't let the wash pull. Okay, so with that done, we can layer. The layering process is straightforward. We just use the exact same colors. That could be green uniform from AK or German field gray from World War II. And all you need to do here is pick out the details. So you can see here really nicely that I'm picking out the creases in his arms and adding some uh, definition to that jacket. This is where you're gonna be painting about 75% of the uniform in this layer color and you're just going to be leaving the darker areas in the creases. So you can see here, this is a really good example, you don't want to paint within the crease lines. If you paint within those crease lines, you're going to be giving yourself a whole world of hurt. Um, and just make sure that you're using a fine brush for this. So you can see that I'm just slowly building it up, I'm capturing the pockets and everything else. Now this section of the video is a little bit drawn out. The reason I'm doing that is because I really want to emphasize the fact that this is a really crucial step. Painting the base color and washing is easy. You can do that in a matter of minutes. Doing this part will make your model stand out from your mates because this is the steps that a lot of people don't do. They just put a wash on and then they leave it. They leave it. So pick out those details, take your time. This is a, a really straightforward step. Um, and it's quite fun when you get the hang of it because you can start to see your model come to life. This is without a proper highlight as well. Okay, so we want to highlight now. So I use green uniform and gray green from AK. And then from Vallejo, I use German field gray World War II and green gray. And both of them are at a one to one ratio. So that ratio is important because we're bringing that color from being a bit darker. Now we're brightening it up a touch. So the green gray and the gray green are obviously lighter than the base color. So they're going to make that green quite bright but not too bright. We don't want it to be too bright. Too bright is unrealistic. We want to make it just a subtle change. So you can see here that the top of the crease on that uniform in the picture is lighter. So that's what you want to try and capture. This is the essential part of highlighting is you're capturing the creases. Now I'm going to admit, I'm the first one to admit, I'm still learning. All right? I'm always learning. I'm by no means an expert when it comes to highlighting and painting. 
But if you can understand the principle behind it, which I struggled with for many years, if you can understand the principle behind it, it's very easy to understand um, how it works. Some people are naturally gifted. They can understand what the eye's looking at um, and how these highlights work. But if you can start playing with it, you will start to work out how it's done and you can see, you will be able to see it. If you start putting down a color and it's too bright, just darken it up a touch. If if it looks unrealistic or if you think, oh no, this looks a bit too silly, all you need to do is darken it up. Mixing those paints will help you so much. I know I used to try and find paints to be like, oh, I need a, a highlight. What paint shall I use? Just use, mix it with white or mix it with, you know, a, a, a lighter color. It doesn't have to be a different paint pot bottle. It can be the same color, just mix with another one. Okay, so now the details. Now I want to pick out the details. So I use gray green for the buttons, or you can use green gray from Vallejo. And again, another step that people miss is just these little details that are so easy to do. You just need a, a very good tip on your brush and just a little bit of patience, but they will make the figure pop because people's eyes are drawn to these little details. So get those um, buttons, especially if the miniatures got them for you as well. Now, these, this Eureka miniature is superb because it's already got all the insignia on, on the model for you. So you don't have to paint it and pretend it's there. This is on there so you can paint the actual object itself. So we're painting the insignia here and I'm going to paint any of it black. So the collar tabs, uh, where it's on the collar tabs, black. His German Eagle, black. I'm also going to be painting his epaulets, black. Um, or black lines on the outer edges because is, this is a artillery limber so they're going to be red so we want to get them ready for the red that black will just um, in, make that red stand out just a little bit more okay now i use white gray you can use straight up white you can use deck tan you can use any kind of white this is from vallejo and the colors i'm just using then uh, mentioning were from vallejo as well um, and just pick out the details but don't go too heavy just do little bits at a time try and break up um, between the symbol that we're not allowed to talk about and the eagle so there's a little bit of black between there um, and like the collar tabs you can leave a little gap between there. you can join them at the outer edges like they were on the uniform if you really want to and then as i said this guy is an artilleryman or part of an artillery gun or a gun crew whatever you want to call it so i believe that they were red uh, their color tabs are red, so I'm using flat red from Vallejo. You could use a lighter red just to make it really stand out, but it looked like a pretty dark red anyway uh, in this picture that I'm using. So I'm just flat red is just the easiest color and probably the only real red that I've got at the minute anyway. So uh, that's what I was dealing with. So the chap that we've just painted belongs with this set. This is a Eureka Miniatures brand new release, 28 millimeter horse-drawn limber for the German army. It includes six horses and five figures. Everything with this kit is metal. The heads on the figures are interchangeable and the rifles come loose. So you get a selection of caps or helmets. The only things that aren't included are the base, which are made from wood, and the cables between the horses, which I used some old bits of wire. This kit is superb, guys. It was fantastic quality, and they've done an exceptional job with the sculpts. Also included with this kit are a selection of wheels. So you either get the wooden wheels, or you get the metal wheels for obviously towing heavier artillery pieces. I highly recommend this set if you're looking for something that's going to be super unique and really stand out on the table i'm not too familiar with many companies if any that make 28 millimeter metal german limbers especially for this many horses you're talking six horses here so i'm going to leave all the details to where you can purchase this in the description this is also going to end up at eureka miniatures uh, main shop so hopefully it will get there in one piece so please head over to Eureka Miniatures and get yourself a set of these and support the channel if you want to show us some of your work please jump on the painting panzers and friends group on Facebook I'd love to see what you're working on and also I'd like to say a huge thank you 
to my Patreon supporters Patrick, Elliot, James and David. You guys are absolutely awesome. And another shout out must also go to Nick at Eureka Miniatures for sending me this limber completely free um, and having me paint it up for his shop. It is an honour and I thoroughly enjoyed this. Other than that, I'm going to finish it here. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. And for those existing members, thank you for your support. Okay guys, I'll catch you at the next one.